from the AM560 studios, this is Debate Night in America with your host, Bruce DeMont. At this time, we're going to head west. We're going out to Simi Valley and the Reagan Presidential Library. Joanne Jeanette is with us. Uh, she's an AM560 reporter, and she joins us. And uh, are you in the spin room right now, Joanne? I, I was, but it was so crowded oh. in there. So, so you uh, found Kennedy's a quiet down spot. There with Newsom right now. Yeah, I, so I came up, came back upstairs. I'm getting ready to head out. I, I heard your callers. I agree. Donald Trump won this debate, and he wasn't even there. Mm. Uh, the uh, Pence, I thought he must have some coaching lately, because he was a little bit more vibrant and, and passive-aggressive and kind of fun. But one thing that everyone in the media room agreed on, he tried to deliver some sort of joke about sleeping with his wife, <sighs> yeah, no. and it didn't land. No, and it none was of his one jokes. Of those really, unco- well, it was kind of funny when he made uh, fun of Ramaswamy. Like we all like kind of chuckled, like ah yeah, he's thirty eight. But when he tried to, it was just really uncomfortable, and you could sit like audibly hear everyone go oh man like I, you got that clip <laughs> it's just, it's were really there any uh, were there any other uh, audible responses from the reporters during the debate with what any candidate had to say um i'm sure tra- i mean a couple chuckles uh, when Haley started saying that every time she hears from ramaswamy she gets dumber we uh, that obviously got a lot of chuckles they were talking mm-hmm. about tiktok and social media right. so that got some some chuckles by everyone then right before for the debate, and I don't know if you guys caught this, you know, you've got a room full of people sitting in front of their computer. Right. About four minutes before the debate started, Donald Trump's team sent out an email, <laughs> and it said, I'm ready to take the stage. <laughs> and you click on it. Isn't this clever? You click on it, and it says, in Michigan. Oh, <laughs> but that's he, great. they timed it perfectly, because we're all waiting for the candidates. Sure. And, of course, we have our email open. Bloop! So he was going to be there no matter what. Uh, it was, did he have? Any, did you know? Did you know if he better. did he have any significant thing to say in Michigan? Did you hear any of what he said? I didn't. I didn't. No, I have to admit I didn't. I was watching the debate the whole time, and uh, just kind of taking, you know, taking notes. And I don't know. I, I thought Pence was a little bit more animated than I've ever seen him. Like a little mm-hmm. bit more charming. Right. So I was impressed by that. I was like, whoa. This is a Mike Pence, I don't know. But then he did try that, like, weird sleep with my wife joke. It was some comment from Chris Christie, right? It just didn't make sense. Well, Chris Christie, I mean, I I would assume that that insofar as the reporters in the room, they probably liked Christie because Christie gave them exactly what they were looking for, someone to punch Donald Trump in the nose uh, rhetorically, uh, which he did. But then uh, DeSantis quickly came back and I think... uh, made the punch even even deeper. Right, it was Christie and DeSantis, the ones who kept bringing the up one Trump. one punch, yeah. And, yeah, and they kept saying, he should be here, he should be here. Well, this is your time, guys. Like, <laughs> he's given you your time to shine. So, yeah, yeah it was interesting. It was interesting. Yeah, very good. Well, listen, thanks very much for your report. Hannity, Go ahead. Thank you. Right now, Hannity is interviewing uh, Newsom downstairs. Okay, and, News- and Newsom will be providing the... Uh, He'll, he'll be providing the Democratic response. And, of course, uh, you know, uh, Sean right now is probably uh, hyping his uh, November 30th debate uh, with uh, the exactly. Sanders. <laughs> On the debate floor last night, former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie tore into President Biden for failing to take on teachers' unions. They are taking the worst of their members and defending them rather than advocating for our kids. And when you have the President of the United States sleeping with a member of the teachers' union, there is no chance that you could take the stranglehold away from the teachers' union every day. Audible groans were heard from the press in the media filing room when Mike Pence tried to offer full disclosure, mentioning he had been sleeping with the teacher for 38 years, that teacher being his wife. At times, it felt like the moderators were having a rough time. We are moving on with this question for Governor DeSantis. Governor, excuse me, we cannot talk over each other. We must respect each other's time. Reporting from the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library in Simi Valley, California. Joanne Jeanette, AM 560, The Answer. It was a night without Donald Trump at the second GOP primary debate in Simi Valley, California. But Republican presidential candidates Chris Christie and Ron DeSantis were vocal about Trump not being in attendance. These people, they need to change what's going on. And where's Joe Biden? He's completely missing in action from leadership. And you know who else is missing in action? Donald Trump is missing in action. He should be on this stage tonight. During last night's debate, former 
former Vice President Mike Pence took some jabs at Vivek Ramaswamy. Well, first, let me say I'm glad Vivek uh, pulled out of his business deal in 2018 in China. That must have been about the time you decided to start voting in presidential elections. So then Nikki Haley took some swipes at Ramaswamy as well. This is infuriating because TikTok <laughs> is one of the most dangerous social media apps yes, that we could have. At times during last night's debate, it looked like the moderators were struggling to keep things on track. Moderators Fox News Channel Dana Perino and Ilya Calderon, uh, 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 Univision. Candidates try to get in every last word. That does it. I repeat, that does it. Reporting from Simi Valley, California, Joanne Jeanette, AM560, The Answer. Morning, Steve. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Now, it's obviously a big day for Republicans, the uh, big debate tonight. We'll get to that in a second. For seven of them. Yes. Big, big night for Republicans. A freelance reporter, Joanne Jeanette's going to join us. Friend of mine from my Chicago radio days. I was looking at her resume. She's sharp. She's had an impressive resume covering news around the world and Chicago and the country. So she'll join us about 9.15 or so. Joanne Jeanette joins us after the break. You're listening, of course, Sandy and Steve WTMJ Now. Good morning, Sandy Max and Steve Scafidi on WTMJ Now. And Milwaukee got to host the first Republican presidential debate. Some interesting results. And tonight is the second one in Simi Valley, California, at the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library. And we know someone who's going to be there. Please welcome to WTMJ Now, freelance reporter Joanne Jeanette. Joanne, how are you this morning? Hi, I'm good. It's still early here in California. <laughs> Thanks for waking up early. <laughs> Tell me you got Thank a cup you. of coffee. That's okay. I have to anyway. I've got kids, you know, <laughs> that whole thing. <laughs> so what is the buzz like there in California where you are for this event? I don't, it's, it's mostly a blue state, so it's interesting. A lot of people go, what? There's a, there's a what? What? A GOP debate? I'm like, yes, there's a GOP debate in Simi Valley. Um, it's interesting. I, I, I like who made the cut. I think it's interesting. We've got uh, DeSantis, Tim Scott, Nikki Haley, Chris Christie, who I, I don't know if you remember, he was audibly booed last time when he uh, oh, got, yes. got up on the stage. Then we have Vivek Ramaswamy, which is its own thing. Then we have Doug Burgum, which I had to look up. I can't find anything on him. I mean, I know he's the North Dakota governor, right. but as far as what stance he has on anything... So I was actually kind of surprised that he made it this time. And Joanne, the big news that that Doug Burgum made when he was here was, bless his heart, he was playing a game of pickup basketball and tore his leg up. And he had to get... the only thing I could find. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, that was the big headline that he had. And hey, he was a trooper. He stood up there for two hours on that bum leg. He did. And and participated. Very, yeah, it was very interesting, except for that was the only thing I could find. I was like, but I want to know, you know, what is his stance on things? Like, what, what, what would be things I would ask him? So that is funny, yes. And then, of course, we have uh, Mike Pence is also going to be up there tonight. So it's exciting. It's exciting. You have to get there really early. I, I have to get there by like 1030 this morning. And then what will your responsibilities be throughout the day? You'll be actually at the presidential library then. We, I will. And uh, this is exciting for me because I moved to California four years ago from the Midwest, from Chicago, and I have yet to go to the library, but my kids have been there a thousand times. They have all their school events, prom, field trips. So I was very excited that I would get to go tonight and be paid and then um, everything's going to be closed. <laughs> so it's just all we're going to have is the media press room and and then the, the debate arena. Joanne Jeanette joining us, freelance reporter covering the second Republican presidential debate at, from the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library tonight. I think Fox Business is, is the, the biggest source that has. It's on Rumble, too, I think, and, and a couple other sites. Um, Joanne, uh, what do you, Univision. What, Univision, yes. Thanks for, correct, thanks for correcting the record on that. Yeah, um, that's okay. What do you expect to see tonight? We saw Nikki Haley sort of emerge from the pack of the, uh, the, the low percenters, right? She was like 1% or 2%. She's seen a rise. We, we haven't seen Ron DeSantis get back to the numbers he used to have which were significant exactly so what do you expect to see tonight Who, who's going to hold the stage do you think i think vivek ramaswamy is going to again be very dynamic i don't know if you've been um, seeing he is picking up steam i don't necessarily know if if he's going to be you know a viable candidate but he is taking advantage of this opportunity after the last debate he the next day he got over a million searches of his name on google so that was a very big deal. And in, and that a week later, he did 30 podcasts in one day. 
So, I mean, he's really running with it to create a brand for himself. As far as Nikki Haley, I mean, I do think she's a pretty strong candidate. Potentially, could she become our first woman president? Maybe not this election, but the next. She, she's pretty, she's a spunky one. If you, if you read some of the things that she has said, uh, I believe Susan B. Glasser called her uh, hyper-political and calculating. Mm. And I couldn't figure out if that was a compliment or an insult. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it might be a little of both. Um, the big, the big story, right. the big story, of course, is that the, the leading candidate for Republicans right now, Donald Trump, is not going to be there for the second time. Uh, and he's no, apparently uh, staging yeah. events in Michigan with the auto workers. We'll see how that goes. Uh, roughly around the same time. I don't think he's missing a beat here. I think he seems to be comfortable in, in the lead. He's not going to do anything to, to shake that up. And for the other candidates, they're just trying to be noticed or recognized right. as a serious candidate here. So really, I don't think it matters that he's here. I don't either. It didn't the last time because he did the interview with, with uh, Tucker Carlson and it got all those views and it got them all that attention. And uh, yeah, I don't think Trump needs to be there. Like he said, I don't need to be there. I don't need to be there where people are going to be screaming at me. But yeah, Ron DeSantis, does, his campaign is like losing steam every day, a little bit more every day. Uh, I think I think Nikki Haley is the, is the one everyone's starting to talk about. She's really spunky. Joanne, we were talking about Trump now, not in attendance, but here in Milwaukee, he certainly had many advocates and surrogates is the right word, um, and many supporters that seemed that were in the audience what is the size of the audience tonight at the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library, and who will be in the audience? That's that's a really that's a great question, and I'm still trying to find out the answer to that. Um, they gave me sort of like the, the press information. They gave me the setup. I don't even get to park at the library. Like they keep it really tight. And if you have any guests that are coming in that are not pre-approved, uh, they actually have to get pre-approval. We have to go and park somewhere like two miles away, and then they shuttle us over there. So it's very like we're making sure we know everybody that's in this building. So that was an interesting question for me, too. I don't have anyone in particular that I would be interviewing. I'm just going to stay in the media section if they happen to come through, which they did in Milwaukee. They go back to the press room. They they chat with a lot of the reporters. OK, where are you from? Oh, great. And they, you know, whatever you want to ask them. Um, so I'm just kind of playing it by ear today because I'm just a freelancer for a couple media outlets. So I'm not doing anything official. And the great thing is because it's radio, all I really need is my laptop laptop and my cell phone. Yeah, yeah. So this, yeah, that's Joanne, the wonderful thing about Here today. in Milwaukee, there were two different rooms. There was a media room and then there was a filing room. And it was that ah, filing yeah. room where one of our reporters, Wyatt Barmore Pooley, was there. And it was Donald Trump Jr. who like stuck his head into that room saying, they won't let me anywhere. They won't let my dad anywhere. But that was how we got time with him, unusually. So you might yeah, be surprised. Yeah, that- who is circulating and who you might have access to unexpectedly. Yeah, and I think, because I know Larry Elder was trying to get into the debate and he didn't get enough signatures or he didn't get the right, whatever, because there was a lot that you had to qualify for. And I know, like, as of last week, so he may be there trying to get in some of the, the press rooms and in somewhere because I, I saw him circulated and saying, yeah, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be. And, and he, he didn't make the cut. So that was interesting. Yeah, I might run into him. Last question for you, Joanne. I, I, I was I was interested to see that they've kicked up the moderator number to three. There was two in the, at the first debate in Milwaukee. If you had a chance to ask a question of the seven oh, candidates dude. tonight, I know I'm putting you on the spot. Give me no, anything. Okay. What do you think you would ask? You know what? Nikki Haley had said in an interview that if she were to become president, she wants mental competency tests for politicians and presidents over the age of 75. How would she exactly go about making that happen? That's a great question. <laughs> it's one of those things people say, right? especially on talk radio. They say it because it sounds cool but and sounds no interesting. Way you could hold anybody to that no there's also uh, privacy protections that probably would not allow a lot of that information to be released but that is addressing cool. one of the hottest topics in politics right now though yeah so yeah she, exactly. she's sharp she's on it well joanne Jeanette, freelance reporter and dear friend of mine from my chicago radio days thank you for spending Yay. time with us this morning and uh might see if we can fit us in tomorrow morning and check in and see uh what your experience is tonight at the second republican presidential debate awesome i'd love to talk to you have a great time today thanks joanne you too bye-bye bye-bye in a bit we'll come we'll take a break come back sandy max steve's graffiti on wtmj now 
WTMJ now, Sandy Max, Steve Scafidi, recapping uh, thoughts on the Republican presidential debate last night. Did you watch? What were your takeaways? And we're going to be joined right now with freelance reporter Joanne Jeanette, who was there. Joanne on the Tri-County Contracting Hi. Hotline. How you doing? I'm good. I'm a little tired. Um, I was there pretty late until I think around like 1130 or so. And what was your experience last night? Where did you get to be in the room itself or were you in a separate media area? We were in a separate media area. So it's almost like I just went all the way out there to sit in a tent. <laughs> I know what I did. <laughs> uh, the, the, you know, the media spin room was fun and it was kind of exciting because uh, Hannity was there and you had like um, Kellyanne Conway was there, you know, and she, she walked by me at one point during the day and she's winking at me. I was like, what? Like, she was real peppy and spunky the whole day, so that was kind of interesting. Um, so I thought that was funny. I was like, I just got, I think Kelly and Conway just was winking at me. That's something I, to hang your hat on. Yeah, it, it was a good day. Um, as far as the debate, a lot of people had this weird feeling like, okay, we know Trump wasn't here, but he won. He was the one who won the debate tonight, even though he wasn't there. That was interesting. A lot of mentions of him. Christy and uh, who's the other guy? <laughs> DeSantis. Thank you. My head's still like tired from just so much. DeSantis and uh, Christy both mentioned him, and I felt like a lot of us were saying, "Don't, don't even mention him right now because this is your moment." Did you notice four minutes before the debate, everyone got an email from the Trump team? I did not. I was not aware of that. Okay, and it said, "I thought this was very clever. I'm about to take the stage." This is about four minutes right before the candidates came out. You clicked on the email and it said in Michigan, <laughs> but he was, he was, it was very funny. It was like he was toying with everyone and it, we all got it at the same time in the media filing center. So we all kind of giggled. We're like, wait a minute. What does he mean? Take the stage. Is he coming here? And then you click on it and it says in Michigan. Still so gets your even, attention. That's exactly it. So uh, we were all laughing. One thing in the media filing tent, uh, when tr uh, I thought Pence was pretty good. He had more charisma than I had ever seen before. So I got the idea he got a lot of coaching prior to this. He, when he tried to make the comment about his wife, he was bouncing off something that Christy had said. Mm -hmm. And he was kind of like trying to make a, a, maybe a joke or be transparent about sleeping with a teacher for 38 years. Audible groans throughout the entire media tent. Oof. It didn't land. It was uncomfortable. Were there any so, lines that did land in the media room? Um, obviously, everyone started laughing when Haley started calling Ramaswamy dumber. Uh, or she said every time she hears him talk, she gets dumber. So that was causing people to kind of crack up laughing. They it felt at times like the mo moderators were losing it, like they were losing the track. And so that became kind of frustrating because they, they weren't really, and I, I wasn't really as impressed with the questions as I thought that I would be. So it, it kind of everybody was like, they're being really soft. You know, this is their chance to shine. And then they couldn't keep them on track. So it was the talking, talking over, talking over, talking over that a, that a lot of us were just like, shush. Hey, hey, Joanne, as a media professional, Sandy and I were talking about this in the opening segment. The number of moderators, I, I think two is enough, three, four, whatever. Yes. I, I don't know that we really get anything out of it. And, and we both kind of noted, like, it, they're talking over each other. They did a lot of excessive reading at the beginning of the debate. It's like, what purpose does that serve, really? Um, that's, a, that's a great question. And uh, I know Stuart Varney couldn't get uh, Calderon's name correctly, so he screwed that up right at the yeah. I don't know if you heard that. Yes. And it was like, oh, God, you don't even know her. You don't even know who she is. Yeah. That, that's how we felt. That was cringy. And the other cringy thing, if anybody watched all the way to the very end, where they tried to do a lighthearted moment and ask Round Robin, almost like Jeopardy, write down who you would vote off the stage like voting oh. off the island and similar to the last debate where it was like, raise your hand if you think Donald Trump should be here or not. And it's, it, and I, it was interesting to see DeSantis just go, this is disrespectful. 
This is we're right. all here for the same reason. And basically, you talk about the kids table, Steve, like don't treat us like children. And a couple of people were able to get in their their last pitches for please vote for me. But mm-hmm. interesting to see another cringy started with a cringy ended with a cringy. It's, you're trying to be too cute and clever. You'll fail every time. Right. When you're trying to be funny. You're not going to be funny. Yeah, that I, we did see that, and that was like, okay. At that point, I was getting my coffee. I'm getting my laptop. I'm like, okay, what am I going to write about this thing? What am I going to say? And when am I going to go home? But it, it was fun. Was there any – there's always the, the post-debates conversation about who won the debate. I, I've read a lot this morning from a lot of different commentators. It's mixed. Uh, some people said Ron yeah. Santa. Some people said Nikki Haley. Any sense in the media room or from the audience people that maybe you talk to – of of who like was the big winner if there was one. I mean, DeSantis did. He, he looked pretty good last night. I mean, his campaign has been sliding, so he kind of like revived it a bit. A lot of the attendees, by the way, that they the attendees get bussed over and they show up about forty minutes before the debate itself. And um, I went over there to see maybe somebody because they have cocktails in them. You know, these people are going to sit. They're here. Maybe they'll talk to some reporters. So I was able to get a few people to talk to me, and that's who they wanted to hear from. They did want to hear from DeSantis. Uh, I thought Nikki Haley was okay, but not as good as she was in the first one. Uh, oh, uh, Tim Scott. I mean, Tim Scott did really well for someone that I don't necessarily think is going to be or, you know, be elected anytime soon. But he really got a lot of time and, and um, he, he was well-spoken and, he, and I thought he did well. Um, but I would say probably DeSantis. Yeah, DeSantis. Interesting. And, and uh, Tim Scott, he, I think he had one of the best lines tonight talking about the response to slavery and issues with education and some right. of the DEI and diversity issues in Florida. I thought he, he nailed it on that one. And how the 14th Amendment is yes. being used. Is it the 14th Amendment? I'm panicking in my notes. Uh, <laughs> that's but, but, okay. but that's how the okay. 14th Amendment is, was really geared towards slavery and not immigration and how that's being interpreted. It right. was That was an interesting, again, discussion, not just an argument. Yes. Oh, and there was also another time that everyone kind of got into it. Uh, Haley and Scott were, you know, they were talking about the gas tax. So they started bickering. I, I, I kind of, I love circuses. <laughs> so I, I love debates. It, it, it was like an old married couple bickering and it was fun to listen. And you're going, okay, okay. So that, that was another one. And, uh, Doug Burgum got way more time than I ever thought he would. <laughs> Way more time than I ever He's thought. got a lot of money, and he certainly he wants to stay on that stage. I don't know that he needs to be there. That, that's my final yeah, question, I, Joanne. Yeah, it's I like, <laughs> next time, the third debate, which of this group is still on? If there's still seven or eight or six. There, there's no way there's going to be seven next time. There can't be, right? There can't be. No, no. I would say four. I would say four. And does Trump show up? No. He's not <laughs> going to show up at all. He's not going to show up to any of these things. What a fascinating year of politics that that, lay, that lays ahead. Debates yeah. where, the, where the leading candidate doesn't even bother to show up yet he gets all the attention. Freelance reporter Joanne Jeanette there at the second Republican presidential debate. Thank you so much for joining us, Joanne. Bye bye. Good morning. <laughs> bye bye. Good morning, Joanne.